Greetings, YouTube. Once again, sorry for the fan noise. It's still warm here. Today I'm going to review the latest non-fiction book that I have read, Cultural Literacy, What Every American Needs to Know, by Professor E. D. Hirsch, Jr. Now, Professor Hirsch's premise in this book is that there is a body of knowledge that every American needs to understand. They need to comprehend it. Because if they don't, they're not going to be able to communicate with each other effectively. They are not going to be able to become informed voters and fully engage the democratic process. And um, Professor Hirsch feels that the younger ge um, generation, the high school and college students, are not comprehending this body of knowledge. Um, and this was written back in the 80s. Take my word for it, it hasn't gotten any better since then. Now, in this regard, Dr. Uh, Professor Hirsch and I are in agreement. I also think that the, uh, that the Americans today are not comprehending the body of knowledge that they need to comprehend to become fully engaged in the democratic process, to become informed voters. Um, I feel if they were, that no one would have ever voted for Bush. Um, Professor Hirsch calls this body of knowledge cultural literacy, hence the name of the book. And this is where he and I part ways, because I don't think anyone is culturally literate. I don't think the question is, are people culturally literate? I think the question sh that it should be asked is, in what culture do they hold literacy? Because there are many cultures in America, and everyone in the pl on the planet is literate in at least one, if not more, cultures. In America, it can be black, white, Hispanic, Asian. It can be urban, suburban, rural, coastal, mountains. It can be all kinds of different cultures. Mixes involving different ethnic, religious, e socioeconomic groups, different strata as far as just money are concerned. There are different cultural mixes everywhere, and everyone is literate in at least one of them, if not more. So I think the term cultural literacy is inaccurate. I feel that it really gives the wrong impression from this book, and I think he harms his argument by using this terminology. I tend to think of this as an informational matrix, and Maybe this is a term that I'm using now because computers are much more prevalent in the world today than they were in the 1980s when this book was written. Um, maybe I've just seen the movie The Matrix too many times. But I do agree with him that we are failing our students. And I think one of the reasons we are failing our students, and it's more so true now than it was back in the 80s, but it was still true in the 80s, is that we train our students to take tests. And all that does is train people to be good at test taking. It doesn't mean that they really can understand and, and comprehend the context of the data being tested. Our school systems essentially take a piece of data and the teacher throws it out there. And if the student fetches the data and drops it at the feet of the teacher in the form of a quiz or a test, the student is rewarded and sent on to the next grade or graduated and no one really cares if the student comprehends the data. Because data without comprehension is meaningless. You're a search engine. I have a number of them on my computer. None of them are sentient. But if you have data and comprehension, you have knowledge. And if you have knowledge with comprehension, you have wisdom. And we are not training our students, our children, to become knowledgeable or wise. We're just training them to take tests, and it's at, it, then that is at its worst right now with the whole ch no child left behind test mania going on in the nation. We're not training them to learn. I'm going to give you an example. I used to work with a guy named Bob. Now, Bob was a good sort. He wasn't a bad human being. He'd had some run-ins with the law. He did a year in federal time on a misdemeanor charge. Only smart decision he ever made because it meant he had no felonies on his record. And I liked Bob, but Bob was as dumb as a stump. Plain out, flat out, he was stupid. Well-meaning, but stupid. But Bob didn't really lie, and he told me he had been a good student in high school. 
and I didn't think he was lying to me. So I tried to figure out how could Bob say that and be, be truthful while I knew he was dumb. And I finally figured it out. Bob could remember information for very short periods of time. Just long enough to take a quiz or a test. And he would do really well on a quiz or a test. And then he would forget the information completely. He didn't even retain the data, let alone knowledge or wisdom. He was the perfect American student. And a prime example of why our students are failing miserably. Because if that's the ideal we are holding up there for them to achieve, we are doomed. Now, at the back of this book is a list of 5,000 terms. Now, these 5,000 terms are terms that Professor Hirsch thinks that everyone should know in America and understand the context that these terms are in. For example, um, stratosphere. Not just that the data, what it is, but how does it affect our life? Um, there, for example, they're in here, um, primate. I know abortion's in here. Um, the muses are in here. But there are some terms, for example, that I don't think apply to your average American. He uses the, the word Falstaff. It's a name. It's a character from Shakespeare. Falstaff was a big, boisterous man, jolly, fun-loving, loved life, ex excelled in every kind of vice you could imagine. He was essentially Animal House's Blutarski, which is a context a lot of people in America would understand, but they're not going to understand Falstaff. The only reason I remember the term is because I found a prestige class in a gaming book called Falstaff. I'd never used the term in my entire life, nor had I ever read it in anything written in America. There's another in here where he lists the date 1066, the Battle of Hastings, an incredibly important date if you're British, but it really has no bearing on America. He also used quite a few terms which I think show a Judeo-Christian bias, and America is more than a Judeo-Christian nation now, and I think it, it doesn't reflect the pluralism in the religious backgrounds that are present here now. It's very dated in my opinion. You need to have this information matrix keep pace with the world. It has to move through time with us. Yes, there are certain parts of that which must always be that we must know about the Civil War, we must know about the World Wars, we must know about certain things. But the rest of the data has to come with the times. It has to move with us through time. And if it doesn't, it's pointless. 1066, not a date any American needs to know in their ability to be a good American citizen. They get that data up. They can use that search engine skill they were trained in in, they were in high school because they weren't trained in anything else. So this is a good book. It was entertaining. It was interesting. I'm going to keep the list because there are things in the list that I don't understand as far as their context in American life. So. I think I should, so I may peruse this list on occasion and see if I can pick out terms I don't understand, and then go figure out why I don't understand them. Um, but I think his use of the term cultural literacy really throws a monkey wrench in his message. It gets it off track, it really doesn't bring to Americans what they need to hear, that our education system is badly broken, it needs to be fixed severely. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to have informed voters, and we're not going to have people engaging in the democratic process as they should be.